Hey, this is Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this video, we're going to look at how I'm using Fusion 360 to help speed up uh, my metal fabrication shop and make things more efficient. Alright, so by now, you should have already watched John Saunders' Fusion Friday episode on exporting files into a DXF file. Wait, you, ha you haven't done that yet? Alright, time out. Don't bother watching this yet. Links up one of these sides here. Go watch that, come back. I'll be waiting. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump right in. I have a project to do and that project is a uh, pretty straightforward one. It's a um, it's a workstation, uh, a standing workstation for the CNC mill. Um, so this is an internal project for me to do, but uh, especially when I'm doing internal projects, I have to be even that much more efficient when I'm, I'm working on these things. Um, that being said, it's no different than when I actually am working with a, a customer on how we're going to build things. Um, they may have a, a sketch, an idea in their head. I use Fusion 360 to paint that picture for them, to make that vision a reality. They can see what it's really going to look like. And then from there, um, you know, if it's machine work, you guys are already familiar with that. You see it all the time. Um, but. Uh, you don't see it as much with the fabrication side of things, um, for whatever reason. But for me, I think it's great. I, I use it for fabrication uh, even more than I do for the machine stuff, even though my videos often don't show that part. So I thought I'd actually uh, share that a little bit with you. So the way we're going to do this is, um, I'm gonna, let's switch over to Fusion. And uh, so I'm going to do that now. And three, two, one, okay. So now, uh, I'm in Fusion, I've actually already drawn the, the workstation, but I'm going to step you through uh, what I did, and then we're going to talk about um, the realities of, of doing some of this work. So let's go, let's rewind this all the way to the back. And I started out with just an idea, right? So I created a sketch, our new component for the base, simple sketch, and then extrude it, right? So we're going to use... Um, I, 3 8 I've got some 3 8 plate that we're going to use for the bait base. Something that's very uh, sturdy, you know, real simple to do, right? Press pull, you guys have seen these things already. So we sketched it, we extruded it up, um, I put some fillets in there. I did that in the sketch itself. Um, I know some people like to do it afterwards, but I did it in the sketch. And the next part I worked on was I did an offset plane, and I did that uh, 42 inches above and so now I basically created the top piece. I knew that I wanted the height to be 42 inches above the base, right? So again, pretty straightforward. I constructed an offset plane. I did my sketch exactly the same way as the first one. It's just a rectangle with some fillets, right? And then extruded it. From here's where it starts to uh, here's where it starts to get a little a little more fun. Um, so now I start to make the uprights, and to do the uprights, I needed to make a plane at an angle because what I'm doing and as you might have seen in the in the original shot is I'm trying to keep the weight centered in the middle of the uh, of the piece here so it's not going to want to tip around and so I created um, I created this this line or I made you know did the line I did a, a new sketch on that on that line um, from there you know so there's my that got me my angle that I needed so I did a perpendicular uh, to that line. New sketch. I sketched the uh, you know, the tubing that I'm going to use, just an outline of what the tubing is. And then I did a, extruding to the uh, the surface of the or in this case the bottom of the, the the top. And then I did it again, joining them to the the bottom. So it was a nice way for me to do an extrude command that gets it you know everything in line here. Uh, from there, I just adjusted the top to make sure that it was in the right place, and I create a mirror plane, right? So that's a midpoint plane that I created because that's going to let me mirror the upright to the other side. 
Now's where it starts to get fun because I also need a place to put the computer. Now, the computer and the controller could sit right here on the base here. It would help keep it sturdy, but it's also on the floor. It's more prone to getting dust and, and kicked and things like that. So I wanted it elevated. So again, we just go ahead and uh, create a component for the shelf. I did another offset plane. Right, so now you can see the height there for the offset plane. I did a drawing on that and did the extrusion, but you'll notice here, let me, let me zoom in, that extrusion goes all the way through right now, right? This is one of the neatest parts about uh, the way that Fusion works. Um, I used, in modify here, I used the combined command, and uh, I said combine this, this piece, right, this body, but then I, I set the, the command to cut, and I used the uprights as the tools that are going to cut it. And what's so nice about that is now I'm left with the cutouts that I'm going to need. Right? It automatically removed the material that, that's going to be there. And so the last thing that I did is I just did a little bit of prep work for what I'm going to do uh, once I am ready to make this. So this is what I would typically do when I'm, when I'm working with, uh, with a customer, with someone who's trying to design a, design a product or design, design something themselves. Um, the reality of things is this is the first draft and things are going to change. In fact, they are changing. They're changing for me right now. I know. I went outside. I looked at what I have. Uh, I've got the base material. I've got the material for the shelf and the top. I didn't have the right material for the uprights. In fact, um, what, what I found, let's see, where's the right sketch? This sketch here. This is what I want to look at. We're going to edit that sketch. And we're going to zoom in, and what I actually have is one and a half inch square tubing. So let's fix that, right? We're just going to come into this dimension, it's 1.5, and this dimension is 1.5. Okay, done. Stop sketch. We'll go back to our normal view, and just like that, everything after it is corrected, right? So that's the reality of this, is that um, it's allowing me to quickly and easily uh, make changes on the fly uh, that I couldn't do before. I used to have to do all this by math, right? I'd, I'd have to use trig to figure out what the angle was going to be. I used to have to do um, layout work on here to figure out how big these cutouts should be to, to let the uprights go through. I don't have to do that anymore. None of that is necessary. Now what's cool, so let's say I need to figure this out for, um, let's go to the right side view here, and I need to know what this angle is here. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's pretty straightforward, right? Measure, we select the two parts here, and it tells me it's 71.3 degrees, right? All right, I'm set. That's all I need to set my the fence on my chop saw now, and I can cut that. Um, let's Oh, it's also telling me that the length that I need is 44.339 inches. Now, I can fudge this a little bit because it doesn't have to be perfectly you know, exact on this one. So I'm probably going to make that 44 inches. And I'll probably make this you know, right at you know, 70 degrees because that 1.5 you know, degrees isn't going to make any difference. As long as I cut, the, you know, cut them the same, uh, they will be, everything will stay horizontal. Right? So it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so we're all set. How do we do it? How do we actually go from here? And this is where it gets uh, even more fun. So let's, let's, um, let me just take my notes real quick on, so we have 71 degrees and we're going to do those at 44 inches. Okay. Yeah, this isn't rehearsed folks. This is me really doing this, you know, the, it's not, not always something that we plan ahead. Um, I, I just walked back in here and realized that you know, I didn't have the right material. And I was like, hey, that would be great in the video to show how easy it is to uh, make some changes. So there's that part of it. Um, now, let's talk about cam for a minute. What do we do for this? Now, I have, uh, I have a plasma cam system. And I've already done a couple of things in here. But, uh, so I've got a plasma cutter. If you go and actually, let me show you how to do this. So go to your preferences, and in the preview section here, there are some things that you can uh, turn on, 
right? When you do that, it's going to say, hey, do you, know, do you want to sign up? Just click yes. That's it. That's all the sign up is, right? Um, I turn all of these on. The, the ones that I truly use the most, Sketch having the color geometry difference in there uh, is very helpful for me. I'm colorblind, and so having some different colors in there helps. Um, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it does help. But then the cam side of it, water jet, plasma, or laser and plasma cutter support. Turn that feature on. If you're doing, if you've got any of these, turn that feature on. Um, I've also done live review. Uh, this is kind of neat. Mm, excuse me. I've done this with other uh, folks uh, um, that I've, I've worked with, but then also um, with some folks at Autodesk to show them what was happening on something. So nice uh, features. They're beta. You know, they're they're looking for feedback. Uh, but just know, simple check mark, say yes, and it turns on something really powerful. So let's look at how we're going to make these um, these parts. So the first thing we do, and um, I'll, I'll even start over on this one. Let me delete this setup completely. So the first thing you always do, you always work left to right, except in this case, we're not doing machining setups, we're doing water jet, right? So we're saying it's water jet, but really what it's saying is that it's a 2D toolpath for anything like that, water jet, laser, laser, or plasma. So we set that up. And then you come over in the menu here and it says type, and I'm doing plasma cutting uh, through automatic, right? So I'm, it's letting it automatically check. Uh, and then curve width, my uh, 80 thousandths is the correct curve width for me. I didn't have to make any changes. That was just the default. Um, and then you're going to set your cutting, your, your feed rates for the way that, uh, the way that you cut here. Um, this is also something that some systems control um, at the the uh, the controller itself, but you can you can put this in here. So you could say use by quality or use by uh, by um, by feed. Uh, from there, you can you know you select what you, what is it that you're going to cut. So let's say it's this top, right? There's our contour. Um, if you needed to put tabs in there, you could do that here. Uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, what heights are you going to do? So really, you know, this is where you would set your movement heights and your pierce and cut heights and things like that. And then, you know, single pass, nothing to do here. What direction are we, are we cutting? Um, you know, so that part of it does matter as far as, you know, plasma. Um, when you cut, you know, for, if you want to keep the inside of something versus the outside of something. Um, what's really nice though is you've got your lead-ins and things like that. So you can actually adjust your lead-ins here so that you don't get that little pip or that little mark where the, um, the plasma pierced and, and came in, right? So, and you can even choose where do I want this to start? And, you know, I could say start over here in a corner, right? So I want it to enter there. Click OK. There it is. That is my, uh, let's move this a little bit and we'll zoom in. That's my toolpath. You can see it come in. You can see, you know, so it starts, it goes around, and then it passes where it came, uh, where it, it actually, so you can I'll zoom in a little more. So it comes down, goes around, goes past where it, it pierced, and then comes back up, right? So now I've got G-code at this point. So if your plasma cutter or laser cutter uh, uses G-code, you're all set. You take this, use your post-processing for the machine that you, uh, you know, the controller that you use, and you are done. Right, you're set. Or you can go one further with this, right? You can actually go, um, and this is the way that I do it because my system doesn't read G code. My system uh, does um, does all that internally. So I go back to the model, and I actually do the same thing except I do this uh, with DXF files now. Uh, John Saunders just recently uh, did his uh, a video. His Fusion Friday was on exporting DXF files, so I won't go into uh, too much detail with that. But effectively, it's it's pretty straightforward. So let's start with the top, right? So here's our top. We look at our sketches for the top, and you notice it's the original point that I had the sketch. All I have to do is right click it, say Save as DXF, and this is the CNC. Workstation top. Save. Done. Um, we already had the stand or the. I think I already had the uh, uh, the shelf in there. Let's do the base. Oops. We'll do. Um, we'll do it the exact same way. Go to sketches. Find your sketch. 
Save as DXF. Oh, you know what? I need to change the, the, the shelf because I changed the geometry on it. So CC workstation base. And then we need to update the shelf. CPU shelf, sketches. I want to say, oh, now this one, um, this one takes a little, a little different uh, approach. And I want to point this one out. So if I were to use the, the original sketch, that original sketch goes all the way across. It wouldn't have the cutout included, right? Because I did that as a body after the fact. So what I did is I actually created a new sketch on this surface and then I projected the body to that. So let's, let's, if you need to see how that looks, we can edit the sketch. And so you can see, um, all I did was say, uh, uh, I went to project, right? And when that comes in, I chose body and I chose this body in here and that, that gave me all the geometry to include how the, the uprights were gonna go through it. So I created that secondary sketch, we'll stop this and go back to our normal view here. I, I did create that secondary sketch just so I could come back and do this export to uh, DXF and that is the CPU piece. We'll update that. Yes, we'll replace it. Because I did this as a dry run last night just to make sure that everything was working right and that was with the old material that I had in the drawing. So I now have my three pieces uh, ready to go as DXF files, which I can now import and cut directly uh, in, in the plasma cam system. And I've got my measurements of 44 inches long at 71 degrees for my uprights. I'm all set. I can go out to the shop now, make my, um, make my parts, and uh, I get this welded up. And um, I think I'm going to send it off for powder coat this time. Have to see if I can get it to, to match the, uh, the stand I made for the mill. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about this kind of thing, let me know. Um, I will do a follow-on video of actually cutting and making this. Um, I just wanted to cover the fusion side of it in this, in this video. It's already getting pretty long, so I don't want to take up too much more time. But um, yeah, so I'll follow up. We'll do another video. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We went over the 1,500 uh, subscriber mark this week. Which is just freaking awesome. I can't believe that. But uh, thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it. And um, I will see you again uh, really soon. Take care.